welcome to my channel Fred Makes Things. Uh, today we are doing a Sewers Club pattern review. So um, yeah, it's pretty cool. If you don't know what Sewers Club is, Sewers Club is a monthly subscription box uh, where for the amount of money on the screen you can get everything you need to make one sewing project. Uh, that includes like the fabric, any kind of interfacing or notions that you might need, uh, the pattern, the thread, that kind of thing, right? So you don't really need to uh, go too far afield to pick up supplies to create something if you already have like your basic sewers starter kit, right? Um, and uh, I've been getting the box for a couple of years, but the box itself, the subscription is, uh, I, I want to say a year older than... Um, how long I've been getting it, right? I've been getting it since January of 2021, and I believe that they started in 2020. So um, there's a few patterns out there that I do not have. And what I started doing last year is when I saw that uh, they had made the patterns available for individual purchase, I bought three and made them last year. I made a toiletry bag, a beach tote, or like a beach tote bag, and a uh, basket. Um, and then, uh, I was planning out this year and I thought, mm, let's see what else they have as an option for purchasing more of the pattern, um, or more of the patterns. And I saw this, uh, cozy cup carrier and it intrigued me. Wasn't sure exactly what it was or how it worked. And so I wanted to pick it up, um, and see how much it was. It was on sale. I don't remember how much I paid for it, but it is currently, um, the price that you see on the screen. I know it's no more than $10. They're all around, for the most part, the older patterns usually sit around $6 or $8. So I can't imagine it being more than that. Um, and also, with that being said, and talking about the pattern, um, if there are any other of the original patterns from before... Um, January of 2020 that you'd like me to do, uh, let me know and I'll order those as well. You just have to go over to Sewers Club and take a look and see what they have. Um, or if there's patterns from other companies that you'd like to see, also let me know and I'll go take a look. But anyway, um, let's just start talking about this project itself. So uh, part one is my introduction and in talking about inspiration for this pattern, which I think is what I've just done. Uh, part two is assembling the project. Part three is pros, cons, and user error. And then part four will be final thoughts and sign off. Seeing as how I already basically talked about part one, let's just um, get into part two, um, assembling the project. Um, yeah, so like I knew that I was going to do this um, cup carrier um, and you can get Sometimes you can get the original fabrics that they used in these uh, patterns as well, for, like the original project boxes, but I didn't even look for it. I have so many fat quarters and things here that I didn't need to go out and buy anything more. So um, the first thing I did was kind of look at the fabric that I needed, and I saw that I needed basically two fat quarters and um, a bit of a third kind of fabric. I needed a fabric for the exterior, a fabric for the interior, and then a fabric for the handles, for the handle and the interior pocket. So um, I went to my fabric stash and I took a look around. I really liked the feeling of this kind of abstract kind of floral, like whimsical floral. And I saw a fat quarter bundle that I had picked up at Joanne Fabrics on clearance, I want to say like last year. Um, I like the color story of the fat quarter bundle. I like the grays, the pinks, the blues, and the yellows of it. Like the story spoke to me, but when I opened up the bundle, I realized I wasn't a huge fan of the individual fabrics. Um, I think there was four or five fabrics. Off the top of my head, I know that there was a large print gray floral, a small print pink one with blue and white clusters, a white background with a plaid on it, uh, and a butterfly, like an outline butterfly kind of shape. If there was a 
fifth one. Um, I'll pop up a picture for you, but off of the top of my head, I cannot remember. But anyway, um, I really liked uh, the color story, but like I said, not a fan of the individual patterns. But then as I was looking at it, I thought, well, this kind of fits the feeling of the original Cup Cozy Cup Carrier. Cozy Cup Carrier. So I decided to um, use these. So I took the large print floral, the small print white and blue on the pink background bunches. Um, and then I kind of went through my scrap stash uh, instead of cutting up another um, fat quarter and I found a scrap that was the right size to make the handle and the um, interior pocket out of. And that was a, a different uh, fat quarter bundle that I picked up from Joanne, uh, again, last year or the year before. Um, and this was all that I have left of it. I've used this fabric, this like little handle thing in um, one or two other projects, if not more. So it was kind of nice to see like the end of this fabric being used, right? And kind of cool to see how many projects I managed to make out of it. So yeah, um, when my fabric was finally chosen, um, I did what I always do, ironed it and laid it out, and that's what you've been staring at. Um, and the next thing you do is I, you start your cutting. Um, the, the pattern also required some fusible fleece. Not a whole lot, but um, a little bit. So in cutting, um, it was really simple and straightforward. Uh, for the exterior pieces, the interior pieces, and the fusible fleece, we had to cut out one rectangle of 20 by 7 and one rectangle of 20 by 9. So really easy cuts, right? They were all the same size. They were all the same cuts. And then for the handle and pocket, it was one 9 by 7 inch rectangle. That was for the pocket. And one 4 by 9 inch rectangle. And that was for the handle. Um, I'm noticing that my voice is starting to sound a little hoarse. And if you hear it on your end, I'm sorry. Um, I went to uh, the Oilers Bruins game last night. I'm filming this on Friday for my and my husband's 10 year anniversary. And even though I don't think I yelled and screamed a lot, my throat is kind of letting me know that maybe, maybe I did. Um, anyway, it was a cool game. I enjoyed going. It was my first NHL game ever, which is kind of crazy seeing as how I lived like more than 10 years in Edmonton who had, right, like an NHL team. But anyway, so if my voice is sounding hoarse, that's why. After everything was cut, um, then we had to fuse our fusible fleece to the uh, exterior pieces of fabric A, right? So it was, um, because they're the same size, right? Twin, um, it was pretty simple, again, and straightforward. This pattern itself is simple, it's pretty straightforward. It's 16 um, steps, but they're all um, decently laid out for you. So um, when that was done, they called for a, a quarter inch seam allowance in everything. And what they wanted you to do was to build, uh, first off, they wanted to build you to build like the little um, basket, we'll say, of the cup carrier. So you had to fold your uh, the your larger twenty by nine inch pieces of fabric in half, um, lengthwise. So your twenty inches becomes ten inches, and you have like a two ten by nine inch um, giant pockets. You sewed them together down the side, leaving your top open, right? This was going to be the opening to hold your cup. Um, and they wanted you to um, then they wanted you to uh, put like a base, like a bottom onto your cup. And they had you do it the, the usual sewers club way of marking one and quarter inch square from your seams on the bottom of both of your pieces. Um, tracing that out, opening 
or tracing that out, opening it up so that you have a um, nice long line, sewing along that line and then cutting out the triangle that was left. Hopefully the photos make it make more sense, but basically you're just making it more flat, more stationary. Um, it's a really cool technique. Um, if you want me to go into more de in depth on it, there's quite a few other videos that I've done that talk about it. Um, or I can better explain it to you uh, in the comments or something. Um, yeah, so we did it on both sides. Uh, and then they wanted us to um, tuck our interior piece inside of our exterior piece with the right sides matching, making sure all of the seams touched. Um, and then we're going to sew around the top, leaving about a two inch opening so that you can flip everything back out. Um, and now you have like a fairly stable um, bucket. I'm gonna keep calling it a bucket cup holder. Um, and then they warn you that it's best not to leave your opening on a seam, which makes sense. So if you get your seams matched together nicely, everything will sit together nicely. Then they want you to turn it right side out. Um, and then sewing a top stitch around your top. That will catch the opening that you made um, and make a nice clean top. Um, remember also to iron this so that you have like a really clean top edge. They don't suggest it, but I do recommend it um then they wanted you to focus on your pocket uh, you took your nine by seven inch pocket piece you fold it in half with your right sides together um, then they had you sew along the bottom like the seven inch side of your pocket leaving your sides open because those were going to get caught up um, in one of the next steps by sewing along the bottom, um, you end up making a tube. So they want you to flip that tube right side out, um, ironing it flat, and then sewing a top stitch um, along the top of your pocket so that you have like a nice clean edge. Um, once you got like the initial basis for your pocket done, they want you to turn your attention to the curve on your um, exterior piece. Um, that right, it just gives a nice finished edge when you do a curve. They have the curve template on the back of the uh, instructions for you. Um, I had this piece of tape floating around not piece of tape, but roll of tape floating around. It's the same curve as the curve template that they included. So I just used this for my curve. Had you cut out the curve on both the um, exterior and interior pieces of your uh, remaining nine by, or 20 by seven inch pieces of fabric. When those curves were cut out, then they had you sew, um, in, Uh, your pocket. They had you uh, measure your pocket eight inches down from your curved side um, and they wanted you to uh, make sure that you placed your top stitched part of your pocket uh, closest to your curve and then the rest of it pointing down right so that when everything was wrapped your um, pocket pointed up in the right direction. They wanted you to sew down the base of the pocket and then baste in place your two sides um, so that right you have like a nice and secure pocket. From here your interior section was done and all you needed to do was attach it to your exterior section. So you did that again the usual sewers club way sandwiching them right sides facing and sewing together. And they remind you that you need to leave a two and a half inch opening again so that you can turn uh, this other piece, this um, outer layer, outer wrap for your cup carrier. Um, so you can flip it right side out. So you did that. You flipped it right out, right sides out. Um, 
um, and then they had you um, iron it nice and flat and then to sew another top stitch all the way around that again it helps to secure your opening and creates a nice finished end edge not end edge um, then it was uh, basically time to attach your wrap piece to your cup piece so this basically this pattern comes in two stages it comes with like your interior protective cup holder section the little basket and stuff that we made first um, and then it has an exterior kind of wrap situation that um, helps cushion it and um, uh, gives you like the, the the place to add like the handle and give you like the stability that you need So now that the outer uh, exterior wrap is finished and the interior cup is finished, they have, they have you sew those together. Now, this was a little confusing for me, and I had to read the instructions over a few times. Um, so I'm going to read you the instructions, how they say, and then I'm going to tell you how I interpreted that. So... They say from the seven inch uncurved side, mark a line half an inch from the edge on the exterior fabric. Okay. Then align the edge of the exterior side of the inner bag with the marked line and sew across to secure together as pictured. It is best to sew on your top stitch to hide the additional seam. So this really confused me for a while. Like I wasn't quite getting how they were explaining it. But basically what it means is that like they want you to mark a half an inch from your straight um, seam, like from the bottom of your uh, wrapping piece, right? That half inch is where you're going to attach it to your interior bowl piece and they basically wanted you to line up that half inch seam with what you decide is the um well it's actually going to be kind of like the front but it doesn't really matter it doesn't really matter where you put this but you want to attach that um half inch line with your top stitching of your exterior piece of fabric and you want it to point up. So normally I wait to show you the, ex the finished exterior bag but I'm going to show it to you now so you can kind of see what I'm talking about so here is your pocket or your um, internal bag holder right here's your exterior piece what you have to make sure you do which they do not say is you want to make sure that your um, exterior fabric um, is sewn facing towards the exterior fabric of your bucket uh, or basket, right? So as you can see, it's a bit messy, but this is sewn right against the top stitch of this bag, right? Right on the edge there, half an inch. It took me a while to balance it up. And what I wish they had said is trace the line on the outer like on your interior side, and then you could line your interior side up with your top stitching, and it would have been easier to put it all together. So this looks a little bit messier, and it didn't need to be if they were a bit more clear on where you attached this guy. So if you're making, if you buy this pattern and you're making it, just make sure that your exterior fabric is touching your exterior fabric of your basket, right? So here's your main piece, and then here's the wrap 
that you're working on. And you'll see why these guys have to touch um, in the next step. So once you've figured out how to attach your two pieces together to make it make sense, um, I had to like rip it apart twice before I figured out what they were talking about. Um, but when I finally got it done, I got to move on to the next part, which was folding your bake down. And they say two and a half inches to reveal the interior fabric. So I did that. I folded it two and a half inches down, um, ironed it to make sure that it stayed nice and secure made it look nice. And then it's almost completely done. The next part is to attach your um, handle, to make it attach your handle. So this is again, a pretty straightforward way for Sewers Club. You took your four by nine inch piece of fabric, folded it in half, uh, wrong sides facing each other and ironed. So four inches becomes two inches by nine opened that up, folded the uh, raw edges in towards the middle, um, ironed those. So now your four inches down to two inches becomes one inches, but you get a very stable handle. Uh, they wanted you to fold a quarter of an inch on each side for your raw edges. I did that. And then I fold everything together. I sewed a, a closing stitch on the opening side and a top stitch on the opposite side for everything to match nicely. Um, I also closed up the, actually, no, I don't think I did. Yeah, I relied on those two seams to keep my edges all nice in place. Then they had me measure it five and a quarter inches in from the curved exterior side and I placed my handle there. It said you could put a cup inside um, and then uh, adjust the handle as needed. I didn't bother, but I kind of wish that I had. Um, once you've placed your handle where you want it, you sew it down. They want you to use the ballot box method, which is exactly the same way that we sew down the handle in our um, February uh, project for Sewers Club. So basically it's, um, you create like a one and a quarter inch rectangle or so. Oh, it doesn't even say. Um, but yeah, so you basically sew in, down your um, handle about a quarter of an inch in. What does it say? Yeah. Um, you want your handle to kind of just sit right, match up with your top stitching and stuff like that. That's where I decided where I was going to sew my handle in is at the top stitch. And then I made, I think, a one inch ballot box. It might have been a one and a quarter inch ballot box. Basically, all that means is I made, like, I sewed down a rectangle and then I went crossways on the diagonal to make a, a really strong seam on both sides. Um, and then they wanted you to sew in snaps um, on the front of your flap to sew everything in together to make it nice and sturdy. Um, yeah, so let's take a look at what the bag actually looks like. So here we are, here's the bag, here's the front, here are the two sew-in snaps. I ordered these off of Amazon because I didn't have any extra sew-in snaps because when I was initially looking at the project, it didn't say anything about snaps here at the top. So yeah, I guess I could have read the whole pattern, but really where's the fun in that? So here's um, basically the front of the, the container. Here's the back, right? It makes like a fun little basket. Here's the interior and how the interior sits. Here's the wrap, the original pocket. 
See, so the pocket, the bottom of the pocket sits right as like the bottom of the bag. So that lines up all nice, right? And the top of the pocket is basically the top of the bag as well. Then this guy wraps around here, snaps into place. Here's your handle. Right, and everything sits together nicely. You can carry it pretty well, and it works. This is what I mean when I say the ballot box. I know you saw the photo, but here you go. Um, here's it from the side, from the back. Like, it's kind of like a little take on like a little lunch bag or something like that. For you to get an idea of scale and sizing, here is a cup I was given for Christmas, I think last year. The glaze is cracking on it. Hope it's okay. That sucks. Anyway, here's my cup that I was given last year for Christmas or the year before. So like this is how it sits inside. All right. And then Here's this, like I wish for the cup to be more secure, All right? I would have probably had this sit here, the snaps closer to the bottom. But if I did that, then my handle would have been off kilter. And that's what I mean when I say, I wish I had actually measured it out a little bit better because I would have like had the handle sit up probably another inch instead. But instead I have, I, um, placed the snaps to work with the handle rather than the uh, contents of the bag. All right, so when the bag is shut, closed, here you go. Here's your little handle, All right? But there is a gap and I, that kind of bothers me. But I think it's a really cute little idea. Like, this is what I've been thinking about it. Um, I think it would make like a really cute little gift bag. Um, and I'm going to go into more detail on that when I go into my final thoughts. But um, yeah, I think it would make like a really cute little gift bag. So let's talk um, pros, cons, and user error. Pro, and this is kind of secondary to um, um, the pattern itself. I'm really happy with how this fabric turned out, how this fabric looks. Like, I did not really like it when I first got it, when I first actually looked at the pattern. Like I said, I bought it based on color, not styling, but I really, really started to like this gray fabric. Um, I really, really like, I've always really liked this pink um, fabric. So I think they look really well together. Um, and I'm really happy that they had this as their inspiration photo because that is what encouraged me to do this. I also really like how this isn't floral, but the, because of the colors and the styling of it, it works really, really well with this bag, with this styling. I really like the styling and of that. Um, I also like that you could use three fat quarters of this, and that's gonna take me to another discussion in a second, but um, I really like that about it too. Um, I kind of like the uh, unique kind of nature of this bag. Um, it is a little pointless in the grand scheme of things to have like a little carrier um, for a cup, but I was thinking about it and maybe if you, um, if you're like a traveling, uh, uh, 
a, a person who travels to like a lot of different um locations for something and you don't like to drink out of um like thermoses or uh things like that this might be really nice so like my initial thought was like say that you're like a um home health care aide or something like that right and you work um like at a few different like nursing homes or maybe a few different private residences um and like you you're spending like eight or ten or twelve hours there and it's like and you don't you don't have access to your own cups or you like having your own cup like um I'll, I'll tell you what where i'm going with this in just a second but maybe having something like this would be really cool for that right you could put your cup in here right if you're a tea drinker you could have like a couple of tea bags or something in here um and then you have like everything that you need kind of all together in one little thing like maybe you have like a bit like a couple of sugar packets in there or um like you can carry a there's enough room that you can carry like a spoon or two um you know things like that like you can make this like your own little like teacup carrier right that you can bring from like um site to site right like you have like a dedicated like work mug right and that you carry around right so your mug goes in here your your tea your sugars or whatever can go in here right your little, little spoon can go in there um, and then you have like a safe way of carrying your mug from place to place to place right and now where i got that idea from is um I used to work retail. I used to work in a bedding store in Canada called Quilts Etc. Um, I love th uh, the um, I love the people that I worked with. Um, I love the quality of the products of that store. Um, there was a lot of really good things about quilts that I enjoyed. Some things not so much, but for the most part, I really enjoyed it. And for a while there, um, because I was I would like to believe because I was trustworthy, a very good salesperson, I was able to like um, do all the things required of like a like a, a store person, like someone who would work there for a long time. I often moved from store to store to store. Like my home store was closest to my house, but sometimes I needed to go to like their West Edmonton Mall location, or I needed to go far north to like another mall location. Um, I ended up working a couple of weeks in a town right next to my location. Um, I even went as far as like a two and a half hour drive from our location to help our district manager um, with a store that far away. So I traveled a bit for that. Um, and I really, really hated not having a cup or a mug that was my own at whatever store. Like I had my own cup at my home store, right? That I would drink water out of or whatever, but I didn't have like a cup that traveled with me. Um, often it was fine. I usually had my water bottle for class and I would just drink out of that. But like on the weekends and stuff, it would have been nice to have had my own cup. And if I knew I was gonna be posted at a store for a long time, maybe having something like this, like my own little travel cup, would feel nice because instead of drinking out of like a random water bottle or whatever, I'd have like something that felt um, a little bit more settled. And that's why I imagine like maybe like people who travel from store to store or location to location or whatever like that would, it would be nice to have like a little something like this that would help protect a little cup like that. And um, that is my biggest pro with this is that it's kind of giving you like a funky little option for something like that. Um, that was a really long pro. So cons. Oh, there's a few. Um, this um, pattern came out before they had a tutorial for it. So there's no online tutorial. Um, they're making a lot of assumptions in here too about like how you know how to do things. Like they walk you through um, 
the basics like building the, the base for this uh, putting creating the handle but then when you reach ballot box and how you're supposed to place this there's no kind of walking you through how to place your handle there's no um well a there's no indication that you needed sew in snaps when you're looking at your materials and then b they don't explain to you where exactly you should be placing your sew in snaps or um the size or anything like that for your snaps um they're kind of like assuming you already know how to do it um I worked on a placement. I picked a placement um, about two inches in on each side for these guys so that they were in the same spot and then I lined them up that way. But it would have been nice if they had been a bit more clear about it. Also, their diagram for explaining how you attach like your exterior wrap piece to your interior like little basket bucket thing is not clear like this is the only photo that or the only illustration that you get and to me that is not clear and it created a lot of problems so I, I know that this is like early days of how they were like writing instructions and putting instructions together um, and now I think they're a bit better at walking you through things um, but that was a little bit frustrating for me so that is also something to keep in mind when you're um, putting this together. Um, user error. Uh, I made this a couple of weeks ago, so I don't quite remember all of the issues, but I would have moved the handle differently. Um, I completely missed on the interior of this side here. Like I had to do a zigzag here to catch my fabric and I still didn't catch it all. Um, I did a zigzag on this too to catch all of this fabric and as you can see it split a little bit so I'm gonna have to hand stitch that closed. Um, I opened and ripped this apart so many times that it's just a mess on this side. Um, if you see any lines like this it's just because I haven't ironed it so I haven't gotten rid of all of the marking stuff. Um, that marking is because I misread the pattern the first time. Um, one of my cons is I was going to say that it's kind of like a useless item. Like it's just going to sit around and not be um, useful for me. I thought that maybe I could use it for other things, but I'm not, I'm not too sure what I'm going to use this for, but, um, yeah, I think it's still kind of cute, still kind of cool. It's also like very interesting how they have you wrap this. And I kind of wish they had explained that this is how it goes around your bag, right? So when I first saw this, I thought that, I, that's how I sewed it wrong, right? I thought that it wrapped this way, which is why I had it sewn, um, wrong right I had the exterior sewn like this I thought it wrapped around this way but then I realized that it didn't touch each other and when it's folded down right and you wrap it this way there's not enough um, when you wrap it this way um, this is pointing up, right? When it should be pointing down. So it kind of wraps, like what you think is going to be your back ends up being your front and it goes right bottom around and over rather than like over around and up, if that makes any sense. So that was confusing to me as well, and I kind of wish they had discussed it first. Um, that's it for user error though. Uh, let's talk, final thoughts, and sign off. So like I said, I think it's a really cool idea. Like I think it's a really neat idea for like, someone who travels around and wants to have like that little feeling of comfort 
it would work really well for that. The other thing that I was thinking is that it could be like a really lovely gift. Like they've been doing a lot of gift bake, well a lot, they've done two wine gift bakes for Sewers Club. Um, and I think this would be like a really cool idea too, right? Because again, like I said, you could have like, you could have the cup here as your main gift, right? And then in here you could have some tea or some sugars or like a gift card or something, right? Something like coffee related can go here or like a little like greeting card or it's small, right? But like a little handwritten note and stuff, right? So you could give them like a personalized cup, right? Say, right, with someone's name, like whatever, like a personalized or a thoughtful cup, a fancy cup, right? And then I think that this would make like a really cute gift. It's like, oh, you open it up, you see the lovely little cup. You get like some, like an assortment of fun little teas or um, whatever, right? And then it's like, oh, what a lovely little idea, right? You're not wasting paper wrapping a present or anything like that. Um, just a cute idea. Um, I think it would be also really cool if you're like a um, custom cup creator or a potter or something like that, right? To have this as like an option to wrap your cups in, right? It would cost like a little extra, like maybe collaborate with somebody and do something like that. I don't know. I just think it's a cute little idea for it. So yeah, I really like it. The other thing I wanted to say too is that um, I did use a fat quarter of fabric for for this and I had some leftovers so there was enough leftover for me to do what I've been doing a lot of lately which is two cat coasters and a mug rug so the front of my cat coaster looks like this I didn't have any more of this fabric left so I picked this blue from um, the beach tote bag that I made last year. Did it like this, right? So here's the interior fabric, here's the exterior fabric, and here's one of the other matching fabrics, right? So I thought that looked really kind of cute. So I managed to make this guy out of the scrap, this guy out of the scrap. I made two strips of fabric, right? And then I cut them and then I just reversed um, which side these were on and then I had this so here's the last of this blue this is all that's left of this blue right added this blue and then on the back I did butterflies and then I sewed in a Fred makes things tag um, I made a mistake on this one where I didn't catch my edge properly so I did just like a little cuff thing on it and I think that I'm going to start I'm going to build an Etsy shop and start making these kinds of guys um, for sale. So I'm making out of like scrap or whatever. And so my thing too that I wanted to mention is that if you end up using three fat quarters for this project, right, you only need a little bit of fabric for this and the interior, you might be able to like do something like this, like a couple of mug rugs or coasters or something and it's still part of the same theme I don't think they fit yeah they don't fit into the pocket at all right but they could fit in here with your cup if you wanted to make this like a completely like a themed thing so anyway that's this guy. Um, so I ask, I'll leave you with some questions. Um, A, because I just mentioned it, would you, the viewers who are watching this, be interested in purchasing some stuff that I have put up on Etsy? Um, let me know in the comments whether or not that's something that you would be interested in. Um, I haven't figured out pricing or anything like that. It's honestly just an idea I've been playing around with. It would be some sewing projects. Um, nothing, like none of the original Sewers Club projects. It would always be like secondary things. Um, some resin projects, things like that. 
Um, uh, second question, what did you think of this little cup carrier? Is this something that you'd be interested in making? Something you'd be interested in, like in a pattern that you'd be interested in buying? What other things do you think this cup, like this kind of style of little carrier um, could hold or could do? I'd be curious to hear what everybody else has to say about them. Um, because in some ways, well, people think differently. So maybe you have like ideas for this that I never thought of and that'd be really cool to hear. Um, and then also like their usual questions. Did you like the colors I chose? Did you like the fabric? Do you like the style and detailing of this guy? Let me know all those things in the comments. Um, if you like this kind of content, I do do sewing style videos every single Wednesday. Um, not always Sewers Club related, heavily Sewers Club related, but not always. Um, so subscribe if you want to see that. Um, Fridays are a long-term project. We're nearing the end of uh, our Paint by Numbers project. Um, we have part seven going up on Friday. Next week will be part eight, and then we'll have the final time lapse and then a brand new project. Um, so yeah, uh, and then on Mondays are like a miscellaneous bag, unboxings and reviews and things like that. So if any of that interests you, do uh, subscribe. Um, check, ever, check other videos out, things like that. Um, also, if you've made it this far into the ramblingness of my video, it's way too long. Um, like, like the video. Let me know that you've enjoyed this kind of content. Um, and yeah, I'm going to go. My throat's really, really starting to bother me. So with all of that being said, I'm going to say thank you so much for watching. And I will talk with you again soon. Bye. Bye.